Hi, today I will show you how to sew the Pleiad 1 dress, so this one with the gathered shoulders. I will show you two different sleeve options, so the tight sleeves as you can see here, and the lantern sleeves with the puffy bottom. I won't show the classic long and short sleeves because they are much easier, but I will show you how to attach any sleeve to the armhole. For this dress, you can choose either a double goes, a cotton crepe, viscose or rayon crepe, polyester or tensile crepe, so all soft and flowy fabrics with a bit of body. And I have also seen versions uh, of this dress in uh, stiffer cotton, um, like uh, cotton lawn, or even light denim, and it was very pretty. Before sewing, you should wash the fabric and let it dry in the same way you will care for your future garment. This will ensure it shrinks before sewing and not after. Then fold it in half, cut the pattern pieces and place notches. If you're using the PDF pattern, don't forget to print at 100% scale and check the disk square. So as you can see, I applied interfacing on all pieces that need to be interfaced, front and back facings. And if you are doing the lantern sleeves, Interface page 7 as well to the sleeve bracelet. I always use a professional woven interfacing in a suitable way for my fabric uh, and it's important to get a professional finish. Then I use silk organza. It's both very thin and sturdy and it will prevent the bias cut edges from stretching. So I apply it on the neckline and bottom of front bodies uh, because both are cut in, on the bias. And, uh, and they can stretch out of shape. Uh, so here is the front bodice with the wrong side showing. I cut a strip of organza about one centimeter wide, that's uh, 0 0.39 inch, and I pin it inside the seam allowance, as close as possible to where the seam line will be. It can show outside of the seam allowance, it's not a problem because we are working on the wrong side of the garment. Then I sew the organza strip inside the seam allowance, and I sew at uh, about one or two millimeters from where the seam line will be. So as you can see, I have stabilized the bottom of bodice and neckline. And now I will insert gathering threads here in between the markings on the shoulders. I will insert my gathering threads. Uh, so I'm using a longer stitch and I do a row of stitching in the seam allowance and another one outside, so on either side of the seam line. Here are my gathering threads. So as you can see, I left loose threads on the sides and I will pull these threads to create together. I do the same on the other body's front and on the skirt front pieces on the top. So here is the top of the skirts. I, I have the center tip in my right hand and so I will insert gathering threads uh, in between the markings. I have done my gathers on the skirt front, now I will pull on the threads to create the gathers and pin to body's front. And once gathered, the skirt should be the same width as the bodice front. So I take either the two uh, threads showing on the right side or the two threads showing on the wrong side, uh, so top threads or bottom threads. As you can see, I'm taking the top ones. And then I'm going to pull gently. I can do it on just one side, but uh, to obtain neat gathers, it's best to do it on both sides, and then even out the gathers in between. So I'm also pulling the threads on the other side. Yeah, my gathers are too tight, so I need to work a bit on them to obtain the same width as the body's front. So I'm moving the gathers, the little folds, 
with my fingers uh, towards the outside to widen the piece. And take your time. It's important to get neat gathers. Then with right sides together, uh, I pin the skirt front to the bodice front. So to do this, begin with both ends, then pin the middle. Now I have stitched and searched uh, the seam and pressed it upwards. I also top stitched it on the front, on the right side, because I like the finish. It's not necessary if you don't want to do it. If you want to, uh, you can press the same uh, seam on the wrong side and then on the right side, stitch as close as possible to the seam. And I take the skirt back and bodice back. So match the center back notch and pin with right sides together. See my notch, I'm matching it. Pinning with right sides together, then stitch and serge. I will also top stitch uh, because I did it on the front, so it should be the same. Now I will stabilize the shoulders on back bodies with thick organza, just like I showed earlier. I stop mandatory, but it's better because you won't want to end up with super broad shoulders and they are cut on the bias slightly too. Uh, so I stabilize my shoulder and now let's do the shoulder gathers on body's front. So pulling the thread, matching the width, and then pin to back body's shoulders with right sides together. After that, stitch, st surge, and press upwards. Here you can see my finished seam pressed upwards on the front. Then let's make the front seam. In the booklet I did it earlier, but it's not important. I like to change the order sometimes. So pin the seam from top to bottom. Begin with the ends. So the top end and uh, top end and the neckline and then the bottom of the seam. And also make sure to match the waist seam. So here matching the waist seam, both sides should match. Then stitch and search. And then take the face facings, so match notches at shoulders, pin with right sides together, and sew. So. I won't search this one. I prefer to press it open to reduce the bulk after trimming the seam allowance a bit. Because it will be inside and it has interfacing so it's not likely to, to fray. So as you can see I also searched the edge of the facing to finish it. And then uh, pin to the neckline with right sides together matching notches and shoulder seams. So make sure that the 
tip of the neckline is exactly on the center seam of the dress when pinning. In the back, there is a bit of ease. So pin the end first and then even the ease. Once everything is pinned, you can sew. So on the front, it will go down to here. Uh, but I like my neckline to be a bit deeper. So to do this, just trace a deeper seam line with a ruler. If you look at my pictures, you will see my neckline is a bit deeper, about two centimeters, that's about one inch. I do it for myself, but I chose to keep it the way it is on the pattern because I, I wanted to fit as many body types as possible. Uh, it would be too deep for petite women, for example. Um, so here, uh, I will uh, trace a new line. And here, as you can see, I made it a little deeper for me. Now, slit the seam allowance at neckline center. As you can see, uh, it, the, the tip matches exactly the center seam. Then trim the seam allowance as close as possible to the seam line. So I leave a few millimeters all around the neckline, but very, very close at the tip. And turn the facing inside and press. You can use pins to hold it in place at shoulders. And also front neckline. And I like to do a few uh, hand stitches in the shoulder seam, uh, so hidden in the shoulder seam to hold the facing in place at shoulders. On the front, it will be caught uh, to the fabric when sewing the, the buttons. If you didn't choose to add buttons, then you can also do a few hand stitches here to hold it in place. Now you can insert the zipper. I got questions about why I don't do it at the very end. Of course, you can do it at the end if you prefer. But I like to do it now, uh, when there are no slips to get in the way, side seams are not down, everything lays lay flat. Um, I won't show you how to actually insert the zipper because there are many videos about it already. Uh, then, once the zipper is sewn, you can do the side seam. So pin the side seam, starting at both ends. Uh, match notches and the front and back waist seam, as you can see here. Then stitch and search. Now let's talk about sleeves. So on all four sleeves options of this pattern, you will need to insert gathering threads on sleeve caps in between markings. Then for classic long or short sleeves, uh, you just have to do the side seam. and finish with a hem. So I, I won't show you how to do this because there is no difficulty here. I will just uh, pin the side seam, uh, stitch and serge. Then uh, I'll show you at the end how to attach the sleeves. Uh, here we'll focus on the two more complex options, tight sleeves and lantern sleeves. So for tight sleeves, you first need to finish the slit. And I did a video about that. I'm uh, putting the link here about how to do a bound slit. So once your bound slit is done, you need to insert gathering threads 
at the bottom of the sleeves on either side of the slit, between the slit and the marking here. So I inserted my gathering threads. I won't pull them just now. First, let's do the side seam. So a spin, stitch, and surge. And let's take the sleeve tie, so it's piece nine. You can see markings here, one here, another here. So pin all around the piece, except in between the markings. Then sew at one centimeter from the edge. Then slit at each marking and so slit like this. And trim the seam allowance all around the piece except in between the markings. At the tip, trim even closer to the seam. So you can get a perfect seam when turning it outside in. Then turn the sleeve outside in or inside out, I never know how to say that. So open it in between the markings. Use your fingers or you can use something like a knitting needle if it helps. Making sure not to pierce a hole in the fabric, then press. So here my iron left uh, water marks, but uh, I yeah, press it to have a neat finish. Then take the sleeve bottom and pull on the gathering threads to create the gathers. When you're done, the whole sleeve bottom should have the same width as the part in between the markings on the sleeve tie. Then pin the seam allowance of the sleeve tie to the sleeve bottom with right sides together. Each side of the slit should match one of the two markings on the sleeve tie. So with right sides together. In one edge of the slit to the seam allowance on the sleeve tie. And you can pin the center, the uh, center of the sleeve tie. You can mark it, if it helps, it's better. Um, center of the sleeve tie should come at the shoulder side seam. So here. And lastly, the other slit edge should come on the other marking.
even the gathers if needed. Uh, the part near the slit will be the most visible as, as it's, uh, it sits on the outside of the arm. So keep pinning everything. I like to pin on uh, the sleeve tie side. And then I take my pins off one by one to place them on the gather side because it's easier to sew neatly that way. As you can see, I'm evening the gathers as I go to get the perfect result. Once you're done, you can stitch and trim the seam allowance like this. So then press the seam allowance uh, inside the tie and press the other seam allowance inside the tie as well. Or just uh, push it inside with your fingers. And then pin it on the seam you just made inside the sleeve. I like to finish with a hand stitch so nothing shows on the outside, but you can machine stitch if you prefer. And in that case, do it on the right side of the sleeve. Once the sleeve is finished, uh, just tie the knot. And voila! We are done with this version. Now let's have a look at the other version, the long term sleeve. So here, insert gathering threads on the sleeve caps, like for any other sleeve version in this pattern. Then take the sleeve bottom piece, it's piece 6, and insert gathering threads on top and bottom. Pull the gathering threads on the top part and don't pull them on the bottom part just yet. Pin it with right sides together to sleeve bottom, stitch, surge and press upwards on the wrong side. And then I also like to top stitch here on the right side. It's not mandatory, but I like it. And do the side seam, but be careful to leave uh, the seam allowance free when doing the bottom gathers. So here I will unpick a few stitches to free the seam allowance so I can do my side seam without catching the gathering threads because I will gather after. Still, I find it easier to insert them before sewing the side seam because it's easier when it lays flat and the sleeve is not already stitched up. Then do the side seam and search. This is my search seam. And you can take the sleeve hem band or sleeve bracelet, it's piece 7, pin both ends with right sides together. 
and so and press the seam open like this. Do the gathers on sleeve bottom. Make sure the sleeve bottom is the same width as the sleeve hem band we just made. Here it's the same width. Then turn the sleeve hem band upside in, inside out, <laughs> and uh, put it inside the sleeve to have the right sides together and pin it to the sleeve bottom. Yeah, I'm putting my pins again on the gather side because it's easier to have a neat seam that way and pin stitch and trim the seam allowance so turn the sleeve hem bound outside in Press the remaining seam at once, trim it a little bit. And press it towards the inside. And then you can also press the other seam at once uh, towards the sleeve hem band. So press the seam at once with an iron, of course, I'm just sewing, and then fold the sleeve hem band on itself and pin over the seam you just made. You can finish by machine stitching on the outside. Uh, on my side, I prefer to hand stitch on the inside. So here is how it looks. Now you can attach the sleeve to the dress. So take the dress on the wrong side and pin the sleeve with right sides together. You should have done the gathers on sleeve cap before. Also make sure to match front and back notches. So I have pinned the sleeve. Uh, pay attention to the top notch. It doesn't sit on the shoulder seam like on most garments because here the shoulder seams comes on the front of the bodice. Uh, so uh, yes, you should match the top notch of the sleeve um, to the notch on the bodice back here. I have my finger. And lastly, make a narrow hem, but don't do it right away. First, let the dress hang for at least one night, uh, because as the front skirt is cut on the bias, it always stretches a bit out of shape. And uh, for some fabrics, it, uh, it stretches immediately and a great deal of stretching. So um, let it hang and then trim the hem the next morning to make sure it's even before doing your Hem. Then sew the buttons. I chose covered buttons and made sure to catch the facing when sewing them. And they are 11 millimeters. And I cut the facing as you can see. 
So this is it. This tutorial is over. I hope you like your new dress and see you very soon on French Poetry. Bye!